Hey everyone, welcome to a live broadcast. This is Caitlin McKegg. I am a real estate broker here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for coming to my channel. And today I have a special guest from my Desert Dreamers real estate team. We are joined by Cynthia Salvador. Welcome. Hi everyone. Thank you, Caitlin, for having me on. I'm so excited to have this conversation today. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm glad you could be here. We're, um, you guys were just chatting about the real estate market. Figured we would do this live and uh, answer questions if you guys have any. It's Friday, right? Everyone's feeling good. Everyone loves Friday. Yeah. Is there a football game on tonight? I don't even know. Um, I think that college is Saturdays. I don't know if they have any Fridays. We're not. We're not the ones following that. Clearly, no. no. Go sports. <laughs> Go sports. Yeah. I do know NFL is Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. I've got that down. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe not Friday, but Fridays are good. We all love Fridays. So, that's true. Um, cool. Hey, if you guys are here watching live, comment. Let us know that you're here. Oh, high school's on Fridays. Thank you, Charlie. Yes. So, if anyone's oh, yeah. interested in high school football, Fridays, that's right. It's been a bit of time since I've been in high school. <laughs> Cool. Um, well, this is our first live as a team, um, and I would love to have more of the team on in the future, but, you know, we're kind of geeks about real estate, right? Talk about it all the time. So oh, yeah. why don't we just do this live with everyone else, answer questions, talk about some fun data, because we, we follow all that stuff. So yeah. uh, Cynthia focuses mainly in the West Valley, so she covers a lot of Verado, Buckeye, Estrella. Um, and, uh, she is keeping busy as all of us are. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quite funny, uh, ready for some great real estate information. All right, Ernest, here we go. Yeah. The West Valley is a little bit different than central Phoenix. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, well, one of the things that we were talking about earlier is the contract ratio. Um, and we figured we'd dig into this because the Crawford Report has this really cool map where you can see every zip code and whether it's hot, cold, warm, um, frenzy, which there's not much of those anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So um, we figured we'll just, you know, start there. Let's pull that up, take everyone through it because it's pretty interesting to see when we were looking at this in the past, uh, this map used to look a lot different. Um, it was, it was pretty dark everywhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> now we got a lot of green. So let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better if this will work for me. Um, and you can see like they have their, their little key over here that, um, these different readings, zero to 30 is cold, 30 to 60 is warm, 60 to 80 hot, hotter frenzy. Um, and then, you know, warm is green. So Obviously, we've got a lot of warm going on, not a whole lot of like hot, hotter frenzy stuff. So um, let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Why don't we start over in Buckeye and yeah, see how things are going on there? Uh, let's see. I know I got to come over here. Which zip code should we pick? Is this? Oops. Uh, let's do eight five three nine six. Okay, I think we're on For it. All my Verado people on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so contract ratio of 35 over there in the warm and balanced section. Um, does it feel balanced from, from what you're seeing? It does. If anything, it feels more like a buyer's market on this side. Um, there's so many more listings and options. And it's like every time I'm around the area throughout Buckeye, there are listing signs everywhere. It's like everyone is, you know, trying to list their homes, but this is great for buyers. I mean, you have so many more choices. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting because there's a difference between the contract ratio and the Cromford Market Index. If you guys watch my channel often, the Cromford Market Index is um, it, it's a little bit more um, smoothed out. So they look at you know averages, and it's also a little bit more lagging. They say the contract ratio is really on top of what's actually going on because it's measuring the number of active listings as compared to how many are under contract in that area or zip code. So um, 
saying that this is, you know, warm balanced might be a bit more accurate, although the CMI says that we're in a buyer's market in Buckeye. So yeah, a pretty drastic one too. I think was it 50, 51 for mm -hmm. the CMI in Buckeye? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. It's, it's down there, but a lot of that's due to the new construction going on there. Right. Right. And there's so much new construction everywhere. I mean, throughout Buckeye, throughout Goodyear, a lot of the West Valley, since there's more space to build, you are noticing that there's more new construction and they have great incentives right now. <laughs> yeah, no, they really do. Oh, perfect. Uh, we just actually got a question about that. So what kinds of deals are out there for new home inventory? Um, lots of incentives, Michael. Um, mostly that what I've been seeing is incentives towards um, your closing costs. So lenders are providing, um, I think I talked with Taylor Morrison that was providing 4% of the purchase price towards buyer closing costs if you work with their lenders. Um, and there's other things too. I mean, you can ask for other incentives, um, you know, to get um, window treatments added in or, you um, you know, to get appliances, a lot of them are having trouble getting appliances as is. So, but there's tens of things you can ask for. They might be a little bit more flexible with that now because their inventory is, is high on the new build section. Yeah. And even with Toll Brothers uh, recently, I'm not sure if they're still in it, but they had their national sales event going on and they were offering a lot of incentives towards closing costs or towards like the design center, um, landscaping. That's another one. So I feel like Builders all have different deals that are going on, but it's very prevalent now. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, towards the design center, I've also heard of that credit. So it really depends too, if you're buying um, an inventory home or like a spec home that they've already created, then you don't have the option to use the design center stuff, but um, you can definitely get you know credits towards closing costs, buy down your rate, um, early rate lock-in um, credits for that, that kind of thing. It's a lot of what we've been seeing. Good question. Hey, Judy, thanks for joining. We love to provide current data, so I'm glad that's helpful for you. Yeah. Well, let's look back at uh, this graph. Let's see what else we got going on here. Um, oh, okay. Now I don't know how to function with this. Come on. <laughs> I know it's very finicky when you click into it to try to just get one zip code. <laughs> It is. And now that I clicked on one, I don't know if I can. There we go. OK, well, I want all the colors back, though. Hmm. Maybe refresh. Yeah, we're live, folks. This, this is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a dog bark in the background. I can't hear anything. <laughs> OK, so let's click on one of the hot ones, like the darker one. So this is 85254. Um, not surprising. That's the magic zip code in Scottsdale. Very popular. Um, with a contract ratio of 89. So they're considering that hotter. There's 204 active listings there and 183 under contract. So just barely more um, that are active than under contract. Yeah. And with that area, since I'm not too familiar with that side, um, what is the magic zip code? What makes it a magic zip code for those of us that don't know? So it's really popular um, because it is Scottsdale technically, um, but I think you have like Phoenix uh, taxes or utilities. So you're like right on that like Scottsdale Phoenix border. So in some ways it can be more affordable, um, but you're technically in Scottsdale. So that's always been the draw to it, but also great location of Scottsdale, very, you know, safe area close to the 51, the 101, close to Kierland. Um, it's easy. It's a great place to live. So very popular, good schools, you know, just one of those yeah. things that people That's love. Awesome location. Yeah, it is. Okay. What about surprise? Let's check out surprise. I can tell you right now, Surprise is cool in a lot of areas. Um, there's a few different zip codes in Surprise, Charlie. Is there one that you want to see in particular? This one is uh, contract ratio 47. Let's see, we've got 85374. That might not be there. Um, so yeah, surprise is pretty much cool all the way around. Well, this is saying warm, but a lot of surprises in a buyer's market. And I know that because I have a listing in surprise right now and 
there are way more um, homes on the market than there are buyers. It's been very quiet. 85388. Okay, cool. That is actually where my listing is. Here we are. Contract ratio of 38. So just barely into that warm, balanced area um, with 169 active listings and only 65 under contract. So that's what I'm talking about. There's such a surplus of active listings for buyers to choose from. And we don't have a whole lot of buyers out there because these rates are killing them. So yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that we're noticing for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, let's see, we got another question here. 85020. Um, let's see Central Phoenix. Let's check that out. Zena, I think I'm talking to you later today. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, let's see. 85020, where are we? Sorry, guys, this doesn't work. Hold out well. Somewhere in Another here. Another great location too, right in Central Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wish I could just type these in. I can't get this back. Okay. Hold, please. Technical difficulties. <laughs> We'll get this working. Um, and just kind of in general, we are about one month into a balanced market and we're no longer plummeting. We're just kind of, we're just kind of gliding. So yeah. we're noticing that there's that massive shift that's starting to slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So 85020 contract ratio of 36, 137 active listings, 50 under contract. So um, that is, you know, another kind of warm, on the verge of cold um, zip code there. Pretty much the only areas that we have, if I can get out of this, um, that are like warm, just to take a bigger look at the map. Hmm. Hmm. I will figure out how to work this one day. Um, we've got the 85254 and then over here, 85012, 85014. Um, those are a little bit warmer. There's a tiny spot over here, um, 85363. And then you've got like your Fountain Hills, um, some areas of uh, North Scottsdale as well. You know, of course this. So not a ton of areas, like largely this whole thing is, is green. Um, let me refresh this. Let's just see if we can see the colors again. It might take me, oh, perfect. There it is. There it is. So there you guys can see all the, the different areas. Um, 85050, we have a question on that one up here somewhere. Without seeing the freeways, I have a hard time navigating. That's at 53. So that's, you know, getting closer uh, to the warm, hot area um, for you. Let's see. I just sold my home in Levine and it was pretty stressful inspection and appraisal and the buyer requested several minor repairs. Yeah, Alex, it is. Um, that's the climate these days. Yeah. A lot more of that buyer negotiation. And the challenge is that, you know, at this point, we're like Cynthia was saying, we're kind of gliding a little bit more, but in the past few months, prices have started to go down and, you know, you were kind of, the longer you waited, that price you were getting was probably going to get lower. So a lot of sellers felt obligated to lock in what they had because uh, right. it wasn't getting any better. Right. And I mean, the negotiations, negotiations, especially it's, you know, we, we have a lot more room for buyers to be able to do that now. Um, mm -hmm. So that's definitely what you've noticed as well, Alex. Yeah. But congrats on getting it sold. That's yeah. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. A uh, couple more zip codes here, and then we'll move on. 85259, 85260. So um, we're over here somewhere. 85260. Where is that? I need the freeways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're at 37 for 85260, and then 85259. Let's see. 85251. Where is 259? There we go. 65. There. So that's our first hot one that we're looking at. Cool. Um, wanted to also talk about a few other things, although this is a great zip code map to look at. If you guys do have any other zip codes, um, 
in the description. My contact info is in there. So you can send me an email. We can get all this for you. Um, let's talk about price changes. So as we were talking about the, uh, you know, kind of chasing down the market, here's a really good visual of what's happened with price changes. These are mainly price cuts, right? right? So it's pretty wild to see. This was back in April. So 568 per week. And, you know, we got all the way up to 4,100 price cuts in a week for all the listings on the market. Yeah. And I think the median price cut in the Phoenix metro area is about $10,000. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think that's what Cromford had said. Um, yeah, that's uh, a lot. I mean, it's very frequent that you're seeing these price cuts pretty much every listing. And some of that's because sellers start too high, you know, not realizing that the market's changed so much. And some of that's because the market's continuing to change and where you started is not really a fair price anymore. Right. And it changes frequently, too, especially now in the last few months, we've seen such a drastic change. So mm -hmm. it's really important to work with your realtor and, you know, decide on a price that's going to be a fair price and not start off too, too high. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, good question in here. When do you think we are going to go back to 2019 prices? Um, it's come become two to three times 2019 price, even with the per current price cut. That's a good question. I don't know if we're going to get there. Um, I don't know if we'll go all the way back to 2019. We've done, um, we've had like a 7% decrease in prices since May. And now that we're gliding, I don't know how much further we're going to go down. So I think we're tracking closer to like our prices in, I think like February of 2022, I want to say we've fallen back to that point. So we got a long way to go if we're going to get to 2019. Yeah. And with so many changes, sometimes it's hard, we can't predict it. So it's hard to know if that will happen, uh, but it's just something that we have to keep an eye on the market and keep tracking it. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find, um, if we just look at median sales prices and go back to 2019, see how far off that looks yeah. from here. So um, do a little song and dance while I find that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you I doing? Have like a, a talent or something to do in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. It's if you're going to be on my live streams, you know, you got to be talented. <laughs> Just kidding. There is so much data in Cromford report. It is so hard to find anything quickly. It's wonderful that they have all of this, but it's, it takes a minute. It is. Yeah. There's, well, while you're, you're looking at that, we can kind of talk about the monthly average sales price a little bit per square foot um, yeah. because that's also down and that's kind of in, uh, with this that we're speaking of. So 282 is the price per square foot and that's down even from last week. But if you compare it to May, that was I think 306 a square foot. So yeah. even from May, you can see that drastic change in the price per square foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's a big change. Okay, found it. Um, and let's talk about sales prices now that this has come up. This is a long-term chart. So this goes all the way back to 2001. Um, whoop, whoop. Okay. <laughs> so here is where we're at today, 443, 800. This is the annual median. So it can be measured in different ways. Like Cynthia was saying, your average dollar per square foot, or you can do a monthly median. Um, so this is where we're at today. Let's go back to 2019. Uh, the median was 272. So that's September of 2019. 272 is compared to 443. So we'd have a really long way to go. Yeah. To, to 272. I don't know if we're going to be getting there. With interest rates going up again, will we see more discounts from new home builders? Possibly. It's all going to depend on if our demand goes down. So if we feel that, because we felt a major halt in. May, June, everyone yeah. kind of slammed on the brakes and it with, um, with those interest rates too, I know with, in the West Valley, especially, um, new builders are offering lower interest rates if you use their lender. So that's, you know, something that you could look into. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
Any info on how buyers are doing in this or I buyers are doing I in buyers. this? Yeah. Good what question, you- Rob. <laughs> they're, they're being a lot more conservative. That's for sure. Um, they've cut prices like crazy on their listings and it's also lowered the average price for the market as a whole. Um, but they are being a lot more conservative in this market. Yeah, they are for sure. The um, inventory that Open Door and OfferPad have is is pretty high, and they have a number of homes I think that aren't listed. That's what the Cranford report was saying that they just they own they haven't listed them yet, and they're they're pretty rough with their pricing. Like they price very high, and then they're not budging at all. Yeah, I've had this happen um, with a client a couple weeks ago maybe three, four weeks ago, where the house was listed for for way too high. We came in very, very low, which I didn't think we would be getting anyway, but we could at least try. But they budged minimal, like they were not interested in in anything like that. So it's surprising. I don't know how long they're going to hold these. It's a good question. I'm curious to see how long they will and what they'll do with the price and if they'll come down a little bit more, but Mm -hmm. something we'll have to keep an eye on. Yeah. Jason, are you following macroeconomics? Things are going to get much worse. We'll see. Yeah, definitely following that. I mean, rates will continue to increase. Um, Layoffs, all of that stuff will affect the market. Um, I don't know by how much, though. We still have more inventory than, uh, or we still have more buyers than we have inventory. Um, Compared to the population, we still have inbound migration here. So, there's a lot of um, a lot of strength, uh, but you know anything could happen. Which brings me to this that I wanted to share. Um, Dave Ramsey, certain that cooling Phoenix housing market won't collapse like in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun article. Um, he talks about that exact thing. We're not seeing demand drying up. We're not seeing an oversupply. We're seeing quite the opposite. Um, so his thoughts are that we're not going to see a crash mainly because we still have low inventory um, and still have some demand. And I like how he had that little blurb in there. It's going to take a normal amount of time, 60 to 90 days to sell a home compared to 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah, (laughs) it's true. It was 60 to 90 minutes (laughs) (laughs) that uh, things were, were going in the blink of an eye. Speaking of which, let's look at the days on market and where we're at here. So 29 days on market right now. Yeah, not terrible. I mean, it's on the higher side, but certainly not terrible. And if it's going to take 60 to 90 days, we got a ways to go until we get to that point. Yeah, we do. Certainly do. And I mean, for example, if we're looking at the days on market, right, Um, had a showing recently and went there, saw it, listing agent called back within 10 minutes and they wanted feedback right away. And it has been sitting on the market for a little bit longer. I think it was about 30 days. But the fact that the listing agent is calling so quickly after a showing, you know that you have some room for negotiating there because obviously they want to know if you're interested. Do you have any buyers that could go for it? So that's another thing to look at too. Yeah. Yeah. The days of listing agents asking for feedback is back because in the front, it was like nobody even cared. (laughs) Do you remember this summer they wouldn't even pick up the phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was hard to get a hold of anyone. Just they will to the, in their defense, most of them were getting so many calls and text messages. It's the second you hit go live. It was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, they had, they had so many things in front of them. It was like, yeah, we don't need feedback. Yeah, that's true. Well, we yeah. do have a couple tips for you guys when it comes to days on market. Um, So I would write this down if I were you. December is usually the highest days on market. So it's a great time to buy at a discount because you've got tired sellers. They're looking to sell. They've been on market for a while. They maybe want to sell by the end of the year. So that's a good uh, good tip right there. Mm -hmm. That is a good tip. Oh, go ahead, Kaylin. I was just going to say, here's the average days on market. So you can see like these little spikes. That's always November, December, every year days on market goes up because of holidays. So if someone listed their house, let's say in October and have no luck and we're coming, you know, we've passed Thanksgiving and they're still on the market, 
you might have a little more negotiating power because they may want to get this done before the end of the year and they're starting to lose hope. Right. And if you're listing in October, which there's nothing wrong with doing that, just, you know, keep in mind that you may be sitting on the market a little bit longer. So don't think you're going to go into it and then just get it sold like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it takes some time. Thanks, David. He said he's working and typing and it's nice to learn and listen to this in the background. Oh, nice. Thanks, David. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We were a little concerned if this was going to be a good time or not, because obviously people work, but there's so many work from home jobs out there. Maybe you guys have it on in the background. So I know I love the feedback and the questions coming in too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. This is a good question. Are the um, sales in higher priced homes being affected as much by the increase in interest rates? No, Michael. Um, And that's largely why some of the strongest parts of our market uh, right now are Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, Cave Creek, where we have higher value homes, because those buyers are much less sensitive to interest rates. A lot of cash buyers in that area. Yeah, Northeast Valley type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Predictions for mortgage rates for end of year. That's a tough one. Where's my crystal ball? I know. I know. Do we still have Caden was on here. Caden popped in. Um, He was watching Caden. If you're still there, drop in the chat, your mortgage rate predictions. He's the lender. You can ask him that question. (laughs) I mean, as the fed continues to hike the federal funds rate, it's definitely going to affect mortgage rates. We've seen rates go up over the last three weeks. Um, You know, I don't, I'm hopeful that we're not going to see huge hikes in mortgage rates that are like shocking, like we did over the summer, but I do think they'll continue to go up. So, you know, I hope we don't get to seven. That would be my, my, you know, positive outlook on it, but who knows? Maybe they change so often too. Yeah. They're all over the place. It's very hard to lock anything in and, you know, to predict, especially if you're in a new construction situation and you're trying to, you know, figure out what your mortgage is going to be. And you have no idea in six months what the rate's going to look like. It makes it very tough for that. Yeah, that's a great question. We may not go back to 2021, never mind 2019, unless we have deflation. Yeah, that's a good thought. I, I would agree. I think 2019 prices, we would need to definitely have a crash more so than a correction to get to that point. It's a pretty big jump. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we'll get back to that. Yeah. Near term rates will remain elevated and even continue to increase early next year. They will be coming down. Thanks, Jason. Good insight on that. Uh, Is there any empirical measurements of supply offerings versus demand? Jason, are you talking about uh, housing inventory supply versus demand and looking at where that stands today. I'm not totally sure how to answer that question, but we do have supply and demand we can look at with um, the CMI that's measured. And uh, we have long-term averages on that, that we can look at. But I did questions, guys. Yeah, really good questions. What else? We talked about days on market. Was there any other gold? Oh, let's look at seller paid closing costs. Yes, let's do that. Seller concessions. So as the market started to turn, there were three things that I talked about that I got from the Cromford report. I'm not not making this stuff up, nor am I, you know, just a genius. Maybe. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but uh, so three things that will happen as the market starts to change. First, you start to see the days on market go up for homes that are listed. Then you start to see price adjustments. And then the final phase is you start to see seller paid closing costs or seller concessions to the buyer. And that is exactly what happened. And we're in this phase now where 17% of sales uh, as of September 11th had um, seller paid or, you know, seller paid or assisted closing costs for the buyer. And if you look back into May, Um, you know, it was very minimal. We're at 4% for the longest time. This was so so low. So this is certainly increased. And, uh, what did, uh, Tina say the average, do you remember, um, for seller paid closing costs is Mm -hmm. 
in a typical market, I think she said it was 25% is pretty typical to see. So we're getting closer, which makes sense as we're in balance. Um, yeah. You know, we'll start to see more of those. Yeah, we certainly are noticing those, especially when it comes to, to the market right now. I mean, it's, again, that negotiating power is more so in the buyer's court at this point. Yep. And that's a really good strategy. If you are, um, I, I just had clients get under contract this way. They wanted to come in really, really low on a house that was listed. And uh, rather than doing that, I suggested that we come in somewhat low, but then ask for 2% concessions from the seller. Um, because pretty much all sales that I'm seeing these days are giving a concession. Um, and I, I told them it, it'll be a little bit less of a blow to the seller to get an offer with, you know, we're kind of keeping their number uh, or close to it. And then, you know, the concessions that can cover your closing costs or help you buy down the rate. So ultimately you get that money back in your pocket, but you know, it's sometimes it's just the, um, the optics, right? Right. And it's the way it comes across too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Alex said he had to pay for closing costs also. Yep. Let the negotiations begin. It's not uh, all buyers doing everything anymore. Uh, Pete has a good question. Uh, what percentage of August sales were to iBuyers or investors? I don't have that data in front of me, but I can work on getting that. Um, Great question. Yeah. Cromford Report gets that information. Um, they go through public records to get all that. So they don't have, I don't think they have like a section in here that I can pull it up at, but every now and then they share that. Um, I think we were at, uh, we were at a pretty high number. Um, let me see, actually, I may have an old screenshot from like a few months ago. Yeah, I'm trying to think if that's uh, something we can pull up in the actual Cromford report, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either, but there was, I, I want to say it may not have been in August, but maybe back in July, I had something like that. Let's see, was this it? Intended use. I have this through June. Um, let me pull this over. Can you guys see that? Did that come up? Okay, cool. Um, this was, so this was for second quarter, so it's a little bit dated. So sorry, I don't have August, but iBuyers were 6% of the sales. Um, and then we had investors at 20%, second home buyers at 12%, and then your owner occupants at 62%. So good question. Yeah. Interesting to know. It gives you some insight, maybe not for August, but for at least June. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we covered it all. I think so too. I love this. We had so much interaction. I know. Thank you guys for all the questions. Yes. Thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in. And I know some of you are working, so thanks for listening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it's helpful. It's fun to do this and just like be a little bit more casual going through it rather than like a put together presentation. And I'm always curious, like we dive into the data all the time and talk through it, you know, on our team calls and stuff. So we might as well share right. with someone. Yeah. And if you guys have more questions, of course, go through Caitlin's uh, comment section. Let us know what kind of questions you have and we'll try to answer them best we can. Yeah. And if you guys, any of you are buying, selling in the West Valley, Cynthia is your girl. She also has a YouTube channel where she talks a lot about um, things in Verado, Buckeye, Estrella area and West Valley in general. She also does a lot of home tours, stuff like that. So her channel is linked in my description. So if you ever want to check out her content, feel free to do that because she can help you there. I get try. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, Cynthia. And thanks Absolutely. all of you for being here today on our first team live. We'll, we'll continue to do this. I know. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. And we're going to do it again for sure. Yeah. Hope everyone has a great Friday. Watch some high school football, watch some college football. Yes. So, go sports. Go sports. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll be back in the future. Thanks guys. Have a great weekend. Bye guys. Bye Cynthia. Bye.